Hey there, Math 237 students, Zach here. Today we're going to be discussing a question related to Skill Builders 2 from your written assignment 5. There, you're going to be matching transformations of the unit square in the xy plane to images of these transformations in the uv plane. All this is being done through GeoGebra. So today we're going to get some practice doing exactly this. I've defined a transformation, t of xy equals x minus y, x squared y, and we're going to apply that transformation to all points within our unit square. t is going to move those points within the xy plane, and we'll call the resulting points uv. The question is, once we've applied the transformation to every point in our square, what does the resulting set look like? Does it look like set A, set B, or set C? If we had no idea how to approach this problem, one thing that we could try is to map individual points from the unit square into the UV plane. For example, the point 1, 0 would map to T of 1, 0, which is 1, 0. It actually didn't move at all. So the point 1, 0 must be in our image. You can see that this small piece of information is actually enough to rule out option C. 1, 0 is not in this region. In general, though, mapping individual points can take a long time. So instead, we often focus on individual boundary components of our region. You can see that the boundary of our square is made up of four straight line segments, which maybe I'll call 1, 2, 3, and, oh, I don't know, how about 4? We want to describe these line segments using equations that we can feed to this function t. Then we're going to see what the output is in the uv plane. So let's start with line one. This sits on the x-axis, right? So it can be described using the equation y equals zero. But of course, we're not allowed to take just any old range of x values. x has to lie between zero and one. So zero is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to one. What happens if we feed points x zero with x between zero and one to our function t? Well, we would get points uv equal to t of x zero and those points would have the form x0, with x ranging between 0 and 1. Ah, well this is exactly describing the same interval that we started with. We have u values between 0 and 1, and v is constantly 0. So we have this line segment here. This means that our entire line segment was left unchanged by our transformation. It wasn't just this endpoint. All right, we're going to use the same kind of approach for the second boundary component. Since we're working along the y-axis, our x value is 0, and y is allowed to range between 0 and 1. What does t do to this line segment? Well, it gives us points uv equal to t of 0, y, and those points have the form minus y, 0. Now, it's tempting to get confused here, but don't do it we have a y variable in what usually corresponds to the x component. But remember, now we're talking about u's and v's. y is just a parameter that's telling us the range of values for u. Here, we see that since y is between 0 and 1, u, which is minus y, must be between minus 1 and 0. All the while, v is going to be 0. So we actually get this line segment here, another interval in the u-axis, the interval from minus 1 to 0. This is the image of the second boundary component. At this point, we've mapped two of the boundary components from the xy plane to the uv plane. This has given us a partial picture of our image that looks something like this. This is enough to rule out option c, right? We don't have the interval from minus 1 to 1 present in this picture. Of course, option c was ruled out previously. Unfortunately, our information is still not enough to rule out option A or option B. In both pictures, you can see that this interval is present. We're going to have to check more points or more boundary components. What does T do to our third boundary component? This component lies on the line Y equals 1, but our X values are restricted to lie between 0 and 1. So just like before, we're going to feed this equation to our function t, and it's going to give us back points uv equal to t of x1, and if you plug those values in, you're going to get x minus 1, x squared. Hmm, it's not completely clear to me what this curve is going to look like. I know that u is given by x minus 1, and v is given by x squared, and x is allowed to range between 0 and 1, 
but I'm still not completely sure how to draw it. Usually we like to sketch the graph of a function by expressing one variable in terms of the other. But right now we have this parameter x floating around. Let's see if we can eliminate it. From the first equation, we find that u is x minus 1. Hence, x is u plus 1. Ah, if I replace x in my second equation with u plus 1, I get a very direct relationship between u and v. v is u plus 1 squared. If you remember that v is sort of playing the role of y here, and u is playing the role of x, well, this is the equation of an upward opening parabola whose axis of symmetry is the line x equals minus 1. It looks something like this. Of course, we don't get the whole parabola. Since x was constrained to lie between 0 and 1, u plus 1 must lie between 0 and 1. And hence, u must lie between minus 1 and 0. So we really only get this arm of the parabola here. Well, folks, let's take one more look at the regions from the last slide. I think this new information is enough to identify our image. We've just learned that the image of this boundary component in the UV plane is the arm of a parabola from minus 1, 0 to 0, 1. Well, between our two remaining options, only one of them is going to fit the bill, option A. You can see that option B has a straight line here. And at this point, we can stop. We've ruled out all other possibilities. Option A must be the image of our transformation. As you work through Skill Builders 2, I encourage you to keep a couple things in mind. Firstly, since we're only matching here and you're not creating the image of the transformation from scratch, you can stop after you've confidently ruled out all but one option, just like I've done here. Secondly, Amanda's included a little sliding tool that will allow you to see where points along the boundary are mapped by the transformation T. This should allow you to easily identify where each boundary component is sent in the UV plane. Give it a try.